There is a popular house plant which has long, upright, stiff leaves and it has sharp edges around it. If you come too close to it, it can snag your clothes or even sting your finger. It's called mother-in-law's tongue. <laughs> Jokes about the mother-in-law abound in all cultures, perhaps to offer comic relief in a relationship that can get pretty tense and tenuous. Trouble started brewing in my relationship with my mother-in-law the very first day she visited us during her first visit to California. We'd had dinner, we were getting ready to go to bed. She looked at my husband and then kind of glared at me and said, no one irons my son's night suit? Without missing a beat, I said, we were waiting for mama to come and do it. <laughs> the next morning brought another surprise. My husband was bringing tea to my bedroom and she accosted him. When have you started having tea? He said, I don't have tea, Mama. So who is this for? He said, this is for Jesse. Oh, I heard her say. <laughs> Can I make you a cup of tea, my husband asked. No, I will make my own tea and for your dad as well. I heard the conversation. I simmered as I had the tea. The Cold War had begun. The worst point of our relationship came during my brother-in-law's wedding. She summoned us to her room to dole out gifts that the bride had brought. This sari is for you, Jesse. This suit is for you, Gujor, and this chain is for me. I said, Mama, what are we giving to the bride's parents? Nothing. Gifts are only for the boys' parents, don't you know? I said, you know, mom, we're not going to accept any part of dowry. She looked at my husband, expecting him to reprimand his errant wife. He walked closer to me and said, yes, mom, we're not accepting anything that's part of a dowry. I tried to explain to her that this was against my principles. Oh, only you and your parents have principles. Keep my parents out of it, I said, and stormed out. The walls were firmly down. Mama was not a bad person. She was just different from me. She was a product of her generation, just as I was. As the mother of an IIT gold medalist, she felt very entitled. She was traditional. She had waited hand and foot, not just on her husband, but on their family, the entire family. She expected me to do that. I was not traditional. She was the queen of the kitchen. I was focused on my career. She was fastidious and meticulous. I was carefree and often careless. She nitpicked on me every day. Nothing that I did in the kitchen was good enough. I resented it. Every night when my husband came home, he heard a barrage of complaints. He defended her. It enraged me. One day, I heard him defending me to her, and she was enraged. Poor guy was getting it from both sides. <laughs> so, during these years, my only joy came from my little boy, who was growing up. And one day, we were following our bedtime routine, our prayers, and he said to me, Mommy, let's play how much do I love you game. And I said, OK. And I said to him, I love you as big as the sky. And he said, I love you as many stars as there are in the sky. I said to him, I love you as deep as the oceans of the world. And he said, I love you as many fishes there are in the ocean. And I said, look, go to sleep. I'm tired. I love you more than anyone else in the world. He went to sleep. The next morning, he stomped into my room and said, you lied. I said, what did I lie about? You said you love me more than anyone else in the world. You lied. I said, how come? He said, no one can love anyone more than their mom. You lied. 
I said, you know, that's not true. Every love is important. But you never talk about your mom. My mom had passed away a few years ago. Do you not miss her? I said, I do. Well, tell me about Nanima. I said, well, Nanima was beautiful. She was graceful. She was generous. She was the most amazing person I knew. But mommy, you are describing yourself. I'm like, oh, my bacha. I hugged him. And then he said, mom, do you know dad also thinks of dadima just like that? I paused while I was hugging him. Don't say anything mean about daddy to him. It must hurt him so much. If anyone said anything bad about you to me, I would never talk to them. It was like a bolt of lightning struck me. Something had to change. I didn't know what. My friends used to call me a ray of sunshine. During my mother-in-law's visit, I would become a dark, ominous cloud, ready to explode and thunder. When I had started my career in the US, I was doing a lot of cold calling. And my boss had said to me, Jesse, if you don't like what you are doing, fake it. Fake it till you make it. I remember that line, fake it till you make it. I decided I'm going to fake that I love mama. I started a daily mantra, I love mama. The first time I said it, the words almost choked me. <laughs> it was fake. But I persisted every day. They had gone back to India, and I got a call from her. And my husband said, mom wants to talk to you. I'm like, no. And he goes, take the phone. I remembered the mantra, I love mama. I picked up the phone. I said, hello. Exuberant voice, hello, bete. I'm like, yeah. You know what? I was in Chandigarh, and I found these beautiful emerald earrings. I picked them up. I thought my daughter would look very beautiful in them. The phone almost fell from my hands. <laughs> the power of positive thinking, the higher vibration of loving words, was it the miracle of intention? What was it? Well, if you think it changed everything, not so fast. When they came back, Things were beginning to get bad, and I decided, no, this is not happening. My intention to make things better was strong. I started complimenting Mama on the good traits that she had, and there were plenty. She was way ahead of her generation. She was a fabulous cook. She was a great mother. She had raised an amazing son, who I married. I started telling her how much I admired the things I really admired. At first, she was a little taken aback. And slowly, she started complimenting me back. I told her that I would love to learn cooking from her. She was very pleased that finally this errant woman is finding her ways. But she was gentle about it. Her nitpicking dropped. Her loud, shrill voice softened. One day, when we were on the brink of an argument, my husband tried to intervene again. And this is what Mama said, No, Gujo, stop. This is between me and my daughter. I was very surprised and quite pleased. It's not that we didn't have our differences, but we stopped making my husband a referee. We <laughs> sorted them out. And slowly, something akin to love started flowing between us. One day, we were, had uh, some people over for a barbecue, and um, I knew that my husband was tired. He had been cooking for a long time, and I started clearing the dishes. She called out to me, Rani, come and sit with me. Let him do the dishes. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, you've come a long ways. She says, it's all right. Everybody should help. I gave her a hug. I was sitting with her a few days later, and she held my hand and said, 
I have two sons. I always long for a daughter. I have found one in you. And then, very quickly, let me go and boil the milk for Paneer. She was very self-conscious about praising someone to their face. So she walked away, but she had said her sweet words. The last few months of her life have left very poignant memories in my heart. Mama was diagnosed with lymphoma. She was hospitalized, going through radiation, chemo. My husband would look after her medical needs. I would visit her every day. She would welcome me with arms like this. My daughter has come. I would brush her hair that was falling in great clumps. I would massage her legs, her chapped feet. I would comb her hair and hold a mirror to her and say, look, Mama, you look like Princess Leah with two buns around her ears because the hair was so thin. She would hug me and kiss me. When she passed away, I felt that I'd lost my mother all over again. Now, this was a challenging relationship that two people solved. What I discovered was a secret sauce of how to manage tough relationships. Your challenge may come from a coworker, a boss, a parent, a sibling. But I think the principles are the same. Number one, the intention to make things work. We cannot take two steps forward and two steps back. We have to remain consistent and persistent in making things work. Number two, replace judgment with empathy. So important to put yourself in the other's shoes. And last of all, respect is the foundation of all loving relationships. And everybody wants to be loved and respected.